before we begin, it is shout out time, and I want to give a shout out to a wonderful YouTuber named Mauler, who makes some of the most no, probably not some, probably just the most in-depth film analysis videos I've ever seen. Literally, hours long, and if you love the nitpicky kind of details that we go into here on Shadowversity, there's a very good chance that you're going to love his content. I know I do. As you might have known, I'm a massive fan of storytelling, being a writer myself. And I love good storytelling and also breaking down and figuring out why something isn't working and why it's bad. And Mauler doesn't hold back or pull any punches, which I greatly respect. In fact, I've had the pleasure to hang out with him on the podcast that he hosts every frame of pause. Content warning though, it can get a little bit edgy. But please do go check him out and while you're there, why not subscribe? Greetings, I'm Shad, and welcome to a new series on my channel called Fight Scene Autopsy, the most pedantic deconstruction of pop culture fight scenes here on YouTube. And I really mean that, we're going to be looking at this fight scene scene by scene, every single manoeuvre done by the combatants here, I'm going to be assessing to see how viable, effective it is from the lens of actual historical swordsmanship. Now, if you are unfamiliar with me or my channel, I'll simply state that I am a medieval weapons and armor enthusiast. I have actually studied swordsmanship and combat for many years. I have several videos on my channel of myself sparring with others and exploring the intricacies of swordsmanship. Now, I have seen people like stuntmen reviewing fight scenes, even people who do fencing, but fencing is actually somewhat removed from authentic historical swordsmanship. And on top of that, I haven't seen any of those videos go into the level of detail that I'm going to go into. We're going to be breaking down these fight scenes frame by frame if we have to. And as you've been able to tell from the title of this video, we are going to be starting with one of the bigger, more controversial fight scenes in recent memory. The throne room fight scene from Star Wars The Last Jedi. Now, I have made no secret of my hatred for The Last Jedi. But I will say, when I first saw this fight scene in the cinemas, I enjoyed it. And that is because it is a lot of movement. It's hard to pay attention to the very specific techniques that they do, something certainly stood out, and there is of course some very egregiously massive holes, but when you're just watching this fight scene not paying attention, it is easy to enjoy. It's when you pay attention to everything that's going on, well we see some major problems. So let's get right into it. We start off with a big, epic, slow-motion shot of Rey and Kylo Ren facing off against these Imperial Guard. By the way, I'm not sure if these guys were actually called the Imperial Guard, because uh, the First Order isn't the Empire, and so the First Order Guard, Snoke's Guard... I don't care, I'm calling them the Imperial Guard, okay? Now, the first thing that we notice here is that neither Rey nor Kylo are using any guard positions. They're just holding their swords to their side. That's not good. The Imperial Guard are moving in and they don't really have any guard positions either. And on top of that, what we're seeing here is some very big telegraphs. And oh my goodness, that guy coming in to fight Kylo is telegraphing massively as well. Do you see this guy with the double knife spear thing coming to attack Rey? He is leading in with his shoulder, just basically trying to tell Rey. And I think actually this is a filmmaking thing. This is the stuntman trying to tell Ridley Scott, yes, I'm coming in to attack, so you need to be on point to defend. Now Rey just led in with a big wide swing of her own, looking at this frame by frame, really telegraphing her own hit as well. Now the first guy that just attacked Kylo here is knocked off to the side, so he's kind of flailing away. So Rey just knocked aside the second guy that attacked her, and the first Imperial Guard, he was knocked back way too much than the force of the strike indicated. Their weapons just simply tapped each other. It wasn't something so big where it was knocked back a full few steps. Kylo knocks aside his second opponent, and the guy who's standing behind them, right in the middle, is doing nothing. There's quite a big opening there. It seems like is again, waiting for Kylo to get done with the first guy. Oh, now I'll attack you. Again, the stuntmen kind of coming in one at a time. So this front guy, he's just spinning his sword around. He spun it to the side, does a pirouette, and within that time, he could have easily closed the distance and just killed Rey, whose back is facing him right now. Okay, so now the guy with the spear comes in at Kylo, and Kylo ducks him. 
But what is he doing with this sword? He's just holding it off to the side. If Kylo had just brought his sword out in front of him as this Imperial Guard swung wildly overhead and stepping forward because he's thrown all his weight into it, he would have just walked right past Kylo's lightsaber and chopped his own legs off, perhaps. Depending on if the armor actually protected them in those instances, because the armor in this fight scene is so arbitrary for when it protects them and when it doesn't. So look at this Imperial Guard who is closest to the camera at the moment about to strike Ray. Watch what happens with his attack. He's moving in, and look, he purposefully misses. Are these the Imperial Guard or not? Are they supposed to be talented? I really think my one-year-old son wouldn't have missed that strike. He's playing with swords already and he's getting pretty good at it. He would not have missed that hit. There is a lot happening here and so when I'm focusing on one of the Imperial Guards, I don't really see what the others are doing. So we're going to go back a little bit and check what this Imperial Guard to the very far left is doing with his staff thing. He swings it down and he misses too. <laughs> He had a big blade swing coming right down, but Rey, her lightsaber, is almost hitting Kylo. It's pointed right behind her, and so both of these Imperial Guards, they are forced to miss their attacks because Rey just sucks. Or should I say the stuntmen were forced to miss their attacks because Daisy Ridley perhaps missed her timing? Was this actually choreographed that two highly trained Imperial Guards just fully miss their strikes against their opponent when their opponent is fully open. So if we're looking at this in-world, from what we are seeing from the Imperial Guard, they are horrible at fighting, and so is Rey at this point. Now Rey is moving in, and she hits low, and she strikes the guy's spear? It looks like she's hitting the guy's spear at the moment. And they get knocked back from some big epic whatever thing, and then she connects with them once again. Now let's look at what Kylo's been doing amongst that. Oh, interesting. So this was another Imperial Guard coming in off to the left, lunging in towards Kylo from his side vision. He leans back and just, just knocks it off. Still no guard position. And is off balance. And then this is interesting, he brings his sword down and he stabs it into the ground to block what? Like these Imperial Guards that are now aiming for his lightsaber? See, look where the Imperial Guard's weapon is right now. It's high, Kylo just put his sword down. If the Imperial Guard is paying attention, just attack high and Kylo is dead. But instead, he swings low, aiming for the lightsaber. Come on. Ray spins around comes to the defense of uh, Kylo and stabs forward. And these guys off to their left here, they're just, I don't, I don't know, they're doing nothing. Ray, her back is open to them. They're just kind of standing around from being knocked back from some small strike that Ray did. Now she turns to face them, good. They're coming down, she lifts her lightsaber and blocks all three. But hang on. Is she actually blocking all three? Let's check to try and confirm this. He's coming in and... Uh, yes, it's underneath the lightsaber! What is this guy here hitting to stop his strike? This dagger thing has a free open shot to Ray's head! Why hasn't it been blocked? It's just stopped because choreography, right? And who is Ray kicking? She's kicking the centermost Imperial Guard and all three of them get knocked back back. Seeing this, she's kicking the center one, yet all three Imperial Guard seem to be getting kicked back by this one kick, which is only hitting one of the Imperial Guard. So let's check what Kylo was doing during this three high attack thing with against Rey, where one of the Imperial Guard's weapons don't even hit her lightsaber, and yet it was being held there like it was hitting nothing. Kylo's obviously doing something. His lightsaber is holding off, uh, what is this? Is that, that's like a weapon glaive by one of the Imperial Guard. Guard, and that the other Imperial Guard, okay, Kylo's holding the other Imperial Guard's weapon to Kylo's left, he's holding that weapon at bay, and the Imperial Guard foremost of the camera who was engaging Kylo has been knocked down, and so Kylo knocks that weapon aside, pushes that other guy away, he's coming down with a big strike, and okay, so that guy there is dead. Okay, big pet peeve time, I can't stand this in fight scenes, I can't stand it when one of the combatants strikes their opponents without their weapon, so they, they punch, they hit somewhere, and the punch connects, it actually connects, which implies that their opponent had a guard down, they were vulnerable, so the question the question is, why didn't they just use their weapon instead of 
punching, okay? If they actually struck their opponent with the weapon instead of their fist, their opponent would be dead. And this is what we see right here. Kylo, he is facing this Imperial Guard who is completely open. No guard position, his front chest head wide open. Kylo's lightsaber is held low. All he needs to do is bring the lightsaber up to strike the Imperial Guard and he will kill them. But instead, he decides to elbow him all the while holding his lightsaber down doing nothing, okay? He decides I'm going to elbow this guy because elbowing and punching is clearly more effective than this laser sword that can chop through steel. And even the Imperial Guard is doing nothing. He could just raise his, uh, you know, weapon right into Kylo's gut or something or in between his legs, chop off his nads, Kylo is dead. Yet both of them seem to have forgotten that they're holding weapons. But the interesting thing here is that the Imperial Guard actually has some bit of an excuse because he's just elbowed in the face. Though so he's wearing a helmet that should protect someone, but okay, say so that was a mega strong elbow to the face that is stunned and is like, oh, dazed and is out of the combat for just a few seconds. But Kylo here, he's all good in fighting form and is not using his weapon. He's just holding it to the side and now is deciding to throw this Imperial Guard. Oh, now he's going to use his lightsaber. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He's gonna kick the other guy! He's just holding his lifesaver, doing nothing, and he decides to kick this Imperial Guard, who has a weapon raised, about to come down. I mean, at the very least, you'd want to raise your lightsaber to block it instead of kick. So, in both cases, either of these Imperial Guards could have been killed by Kylo if he just decided to use his lightsaber, instead of holding off to the side, decided to punch and kick these Imperial Guards instead of actually hit them. Look! The lightsaber is nearly touching the Imperial Guard. Just run him through. But he's not doing anything with... No, I won't kill these guys that are trying to kill me. My lightsaber is nearly touching them, like just a few centimeters distance. And instead, I'm going to throw him forward and not use my weapon. Come off it! Holy crap! If you're not picking up already, this fight scene is trash. It's absolute garbage. <sighs> Oh, and we've just begun, okay, right? So now, now we're seeing Ray, right? See, okay, and two guys attacking Ray. Let's watch what happens. Okay, here's another awful exchange. And, you know, if you're not paying attention, it looks nice. There's a lot of movement happening, but from a competitive standpoint, it's just atrocious. Again, these supposed, oh, Ray's not trained, but she's taking on Imperial Guard, and Kylo is supposed to be trained. They're not using any fight stances at all, all right? Like combative swordsmanship stances where your sword is in a position to guard or attack or be ready. It's just, it's just uh. the Imperial Guard, he swings at Ray. okay? Ray's back is facing him and he purposefully, well, the, the stuntman purposefully misses, but like, <laughs> it's, just, it's so open, just hit her, but purposefully missing right overhead. Oh, it's horrible. And then he spins around back towards Ray, invites Ray in to strike him. Instead of putting up a guard position, he turns to Ray, raises his arm and says, here you go, free hit. I mean, he's not even trying to attack Ray. He's just basically raising his arm and his body. <laughs> just hit me. Uh, this is suicide. Go on, Ray. Here you go. Right, right in the chest. And bang, uh, that kind of supposedly kills him. Whip wraps around Ray's lightsaber. Now, okay, her lightsaber is grabbed by this weapon, and Ray is holding it vertical in front of herself, and she's getting pulled in. If something is wrapped around a weapon, do you know how you can pull it free? Just extend your weapon, point it forward, and pull it out of whatever loop it's being held in. By holding it vertical in front of yourself like that, you are allowing your opponent to pull yourself in. Just stretch it out horizontal! Let it slide off the end! But no, she uh, lets herself get pulled in. <laughs> she just, just, she doesn't even straighten her sword. And, you know the hilarious thing about this section right here? If she extended her lightsaber forward into a horizontal forward strike, horizontal position, she would knock this guy in the head. He can't block with this weapon whip thing, especially with it being wrapped around a lightsaber. Just extend your weapon! Hit him! But no, she's like, oh no, I'm getting pulled in. I can't do anything. There's so much you could do in this position. She's, oh, I can't stand the stupidity. And even here, it's not like he's forcing her to hold the lightsaber in that position. Just tilt it forward a bit. 
just a little bit. Tap you in the head. There's nothing he can do to stop you. Oh, that's stupid. It hurts my brain. And he, all through here, she could, again, just tilt her lightsaber forward, hit him in the head. I mean, uh, it it's just continues. Okay, so what does she do here? She does a... Instead of just doing the easy thing, she, like slips in underneath now it's if you were wondering you know if you she was able to slide her lightsaber out of being looped in that weird electric whip thing well that's what she does right here she clearly pulls her lightsaber free right and strikes the guy <laughs> right up the back right through his arm look at wow that armor is not doing much and uh yeah is dead so i mean this should set the precedent that the armor is pretty useless but all right um and then she throws the whippy thing away which slides off her lightsaber so what she's doing here isn't a guard position okay she's just holding it off to the side mildly raised now i had presumed that that guy was dead okay uh, i'm assuming it's the guy that was hit in the side of the chest by ray before but perhaps the armor saved him and they're thinking no he's not dead so he can still fight and this is where he splits his staff into the infamous double dagger thingies and then he decides to wave his daggers around in the most dumb way ever it's really really dumb See, I'm not sure if any of you caught that, but I caught exactly the movement he was doing because I'm aware of that movement and it's really dumb and useless. And look, maybe he's trying to intimidate your opponent, but it doesn't look fancy, especially with daggers. With swords, maybe, not with daggers. See, I think this is what he was trying to do. And with swords, this type of flourish can look all right, but with two little daggers and the way he does it, let's pay attention, we're going slow motion now, he just kind of swings it up around and that, 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 that's it. It doesn't look good with daggers. So Ray does a little flourish there. Not like to the untrained eye, I guess that can look all right, but for someone who actually does do a little bit of sword flourishing, it's really basic stuff. See, she just swings her sword to one side down around there and then back up and uh, it wasn't even a full loop at least in the fight scene between obi-wan and anakin they actually did some proper flourishing okay not this pathetic attempt at one these are the type of sword flourishes you want to do that actually look somewhat competent and i actually consider myself only average with sword flourishing and the flourishing that i'm showing here is only mid-level i mean it's, it's above basic but it's nowhere near what i would call advanced oh the telegraphing if i was finding someone leaning into both ray and the imperial guard see how they're leaning in with their shoulder their shoulder is basically an open kind of description of this is how i'm gonna strike i'm setting my attack they're just leaning in big baseball bat swing from ray and the guy with the daggers i mean he's got two daggers right see how he strikes with one and he lets his dagger hit ray what is he doing with that other dagger i mean if he just pokes his other dagger forward he'd strike her right in the stomach but he decides his other dagger doesn't exist which interestingly kind of happens a bit later on in a more literal sense pay attention you're gonna see something atrocious if it hasn't been pointed out to you already now we cut to kylo and his weapon is locked this is again a pet peeve okay the thing when two weapons hit each other in movies and hollywood fight scenes and then they just hold them on each other and this is what is called being in the bind kylo's lightsaber is in the bind with this glaive pole arm weapon thing that the imperial guard is doing now when you get in the bind there is so many things you can do because you get to feel the pressure your opponent is putting on the weapon and you can manipulate their weapon into a position that you want and so if kylo just stepped to his left a little bit and extended his lightsaber he would strike the imperial guard in the head so instead of taking advantage of being in the bind with his opponent he pushes the, his opponent's blade down to i mean look credit here to block an incoming strike so maybe he was a bit too worried about this attack coming in and so he's like no i'll block and now both opponents weapons are in the bind and it's hard to see exactly how their weapons are being locked against each other if it's preventing either of them striking at kylo from the bind but we also see the advantage of cross guards here because the only thing preventing the two imperial guards weapons from actually moving further down and hitting kylo's hands here 
is that beautiful cross guard, the thing that I've pointed out lightsabers have needed for a long time. Yet still they don't need to keep the pressure if one simply steps back, withdraws his blade and thrusts again, and Kylo's weapon is still locked away with one of the other opponents, they'd be able to hit him. But instead they keep pushing as hard as they can, and Kylo has to hold them off and then he gets pushed back as well, a little bit off balance, so what does he do? Well he pushes back of course, and throws them off, and then he comes in with a big strike through this guy's torso, the armor interestingly not doing much to prevent the lightsaber from penetrating. The guy Kylo strikes here is completely open and I'm interested in what makes him open. So he goes down, he goes to hit him and he, okay his blade is knocked back in a fairly huge manner to the point where he's completely disarmed from his other two Imperial Guard buddies blades hitting his blade and look people can't get disarmed, I'll, I'll, I'll give it credit here. Alright, I approve of that thing maneuver particularly but it's interesting Kylo suddenly got a huge burst of strength to throw everyone off maybe he just braced himself better and he finally takes advantage of an open opponent by stabbing him through the chest oh see this is interesting Kylo here seems to take what looks to be the first guard position we see in this entire fight scene. It's a kind of long point. This is what the Imperial Guard is doing here. This is not a guard position. He's holding his fist forward in front of his weapon, leaning the weapon on his forearm. Like, what is this? It's absolutely retarded. This is so stupid. You don't present your hand to your opponent with anyone just, just quickly snipe at the hand and chop off his hand right there this is so stupid and like why because it looks cool maybe to an untrained eye perhaps but it is so profoundly stupid. And then we see Ray just uh, doing some hits with the, the dagger guy. The dagger guy hang on did that even did that even touch? We're gonna go frame by frame here. So Rey, her lightsaber is just hit the other dagger and so she's open on the side which is of course obvious and it's good that the Imperial Guard is trying to take advantage of it. So he tries to thrust forward and he's not extending forward nearly as far as he can. In fact he's holding his hand off to the side more instead of moving it forward and it doesn't even look like it's touched. Oh, Okay, maybe it's touching here. Yeah, the, the blade portion was close enough to do that little cut on her arm, but he's not extending it nearly as forward as he can. I mean, just look at how much further he could extend his arm, yet he's not because he's holding it off to the side so much. And it's like he was aiming for Ray's arm, which is again further to the side. If he just brings his arm in and points it forward, that dagger would be getting rammed right through her stomach. Oh, hang on, was that a guard position from Rey? Did she actually raise her lightsaber to fend off her opponent? Stay back! Wow! That's a- <laughs> we have a second somewhat type of guard position. Uh, by the look of her stance, her footing is wrong. So it's a poorly executed long point, I would call it. Back, back to Kylo with his somewhat guard position. Now what's interesting about these so rare guard positions, and look at that guy resting his sword on his hand, what an idiot. But anyway, uh, so he's coming in for an attack now, and oh no, he throws his sword into the whip thing, and is gonna do, try and do whip. Now Kylo, wh what happened to your guard position? You've lowered it. You're holding a good guard, a somewhat good guard. A uh, guard that was kind of useful. Wh why did you lower it, Kylo? Don't do it! He's coming in to attack you! And uh, now the guard position is is gone and he swings around to try and block. What you want to do in many fights is strike from one guard position to another guard position to another guard position. You should start from a guard position and then in a guard position to keep a good defense. You don't want to die. This is why overswinging is so bad because when you overswing a strike you leave yourself open. But good controlled sword strikes generally end in another guard position to follow up with another sword strike usually into another guard position. Kylo, he spins he blocks the whip, a big flash connection, the whip gets knocked aside, then uh, Kylo's lightsaber got thrown down from the thing, but he's leaning low now, so he's leaning low, and again, wow, the spinning, this Imperial Guard, closer to the camera, he decides to spin around, have his back face towards his opponent, no, stop it! 
Stop with the spinning! There are some instances where spinning is actually a viable, proper type of technique, but that is usually when you're employing your weapon in a defensive type action to keep your opponents at bay. So when I criticize spinning, I'm not saying it doesn't exist in historical swordsmanship. Just the type of useless, pointless spinning and pirouettes you see these Imperial Guards doing for no reason, presenting their backs to their opponents is just ridiculous. Kylo doesn't take advantage. Instead of attacking the guy's open back, he holds his lightsaber at bay, off to the side, and now he decides to bring it up after the guy has done the spin for to block the attack. And because So basically Kylo was waiting for the attack to come in, and then he blocks the attack, and then he brings his lightsaber down to block another attack coming in and try and strike his opponent, knock him at bay. And that was actually kind of a good, powerful strike. At the very least, Kylo here is showing some good physicality in his movements, okay? He's throwing some power, some weight behind it. Look at this, like the physical exertion is there on his face and he throws that attack down with a lot of power. So at least there's that, you know? Whip coming in, misses because he hits right over Kylo's head and Kylo is ducking down, doing something with this Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard, did they get a hit on him? It looks like he's almost hit, but no, oh, Kylo's holding the, the thing and he brings that glaive thing to block the other uh, strike and does he take advantage of the opening because the guy strike just hit the pole arm thing that Kylo had grabbed and so Kylo should be able to just run this Imperial Guard who's closest to the camera right through the gut but he, he does he do it no kind of that's kind of a hit yet not I, it was hard and now the other guy he must have been hit or something because he just was kneeling there for Kylo to strike him right <laughs> no to take off his head Complete decapitation, good to see. I, I, I don't know why he just let Kylo do that. I couldn't see Kylo strike him to get him to his knees at any point there. So that's a mystery. And now we're back with Rey against the dagger guy, leaning back to escape those daggers, and then she does a big wild swing aimed at nothing. I mean, maybe like she's stressed, she's uh, off on the back foot, and so if you're off balance, okay, I'll give you some leeway there to say when you're off balance there's a higher chance you'll miss your strike completely um and now she blocks again so this is another example of the thing i was complaining before about kylo where people in fight scenes they just decide to forget the fact that they're holding a weapon and they decide to kick or elbow or punch or headbutt when that means this strike would have connected because there was no guard the whoever was hit by this blunt attack boot elbow whatever they were not ready for it their guard they, they were open they would have been hit which means if they decided instead of elbowing and kicking and they use their weapon they would have struck and so this guy here he decides to forget he's holding a dagger and instead of thrusting forward with the dagger he decides to kick ray in the chest because she's open and uh, and why didn't you use your dagger mate she would have been dead but no i'll decide to kick and not use my weapon i'm not holding a weapon and then he stands there like, like, he could have taken advantage. Ray was flat on her face, lightsaber to the side, and he decides to let her get up. Maybe that was an intimidation tactic. It's like, yes, I just booted you off your feet, and so let, let you struggle, because he's so overconfident in his ability to dominate his opponent. I can see that with an arrogant opponent, but if you're really wanting to press your advantage and you just kick your opponent off their feet, you would stab down in their face face their head right away and end the fight. And so Rey is really off guard here and she just does some wild swings. This is actually where we see her training come back into the forefront. You remember that time when she was training in front of the rock and she does these stupid wild baseball bat swings side to side? Well, you might think that these wild swings that she's about to do here is a result of her being off balance and intimidating, just trying to fend off her opponent, but no! This is, she has trained this type of fighting before. This is her reverting to her training. See that wild overswing, like, <sighs> just, just hit her in the shoulder now. So after her two wild swings, she lowers her sword and the Imperial Guard telegraphs a double hit with his daggers. And again, look how open he is. I mean, come on. Like, I mean, I've been stressing the, the problem with telegraphing your hits and overswings, but I just really want everyone watching this to truly appreciate the significance of just telegraphing like this. Look at this 
you know, Imperial Guard. He has turned his body fully to the side. No weapon in front to protect himself. It's an open invitation to get hit. It's just so amateurish. And I mean, if Ray actually struck instead of she's holding back, she's actually waiting for those blades to come in. You don't want to wait for your opponent's weapon if there's an opening. You want to strike in such a position that your strike will also block the attack from your opponent that you know is incoming. And not only do you know that it's coming in, you know how it's going to be coming in because they're telling you so clearly. So you can attack before they do that and block their incoming uh, strike very easily because you know what's going to happen. But Ray doesn't do that. She waits for the attack coming in. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, now it's coming in. Now I'll come in and block. And it's a double hit. Uh, and then... Uh, we switch to Kylo. So he was grabbing the guy's polearm and then he brings his lightsaber up over on top and then down on the guy. Good, obviously. I mean, again, when people are in the bind are doing something, just move your weapon around the opponent's weapon to hit them where they're open. So, okay, he, he hit him. Didn't, did that kill him? Yeah, it looks like the guy is falling now. He's down. And of course, this other guy with the polearm, he comes in and he does a pirouette thing. What was the purpose? What was the purpose? He was not, you know, he was far away from Kylo. Why would he decide to spin in that instance? Remember, spinning does exist in historical sword fighting if you're actually doing something and employing the spin for something, for a reason, right? There was no reason for him spinning there apart from showing off. It's like, hey guys, guys, the other pure guys, check, check, check this out. Watch me, watch me, guys. Watch me, I'll spin, I'll spin. Look at, I spun. Do you see that, guys? I can, I can, I can spin around. I can pirouette. Coming in, big wide telegraphed hit. Kylo is holding the other guy's pole arm, and he does a static block. <sighs> Look, static blocks do exist, they're just not as effective as a repost where you block and attack in the same motion. But no, it's a static block and what does he do from here? Blocks and then he disengages his lightsaber and comes in with a wild overhead swing where it gets blocked. But it wasn't... That wasn't even aimed for his opponent. You would think you would want to aim for your opponent's head, even if the opponent is going to try and block. But instead it comes down and... It's in front, it's forward. It, like, the guy didn't even need a block. If he just didn't block, Kylo would have missed completely past, you know, a couple of centimeters, maybe 10 centimeters off from his right arm, missed completely because it's over swinging, then Kylo would be open and his, uh, the Imperial Guard could just do an overhead swing into Kylo's head. See, this is what I mean about when your opponent either overswings or misses, you just sometimes withdraw your weapon, let them overswing and hit them when they're open directly afterwards. But no, that hit uh, knocks the guy back somewhat and then Kylo ru is running forward and tries to do a thrust, gets knocked aside. Now he spins. See, that might have been one of the only kind of, okay. he spins and then moves up to a block, alright? But that's the kind of spinning that sometimes can be viable. When you throw a strike and say you are off balance somewhat, or you overswing, or you're just in a position where the block moved your sword so much so that it's to the side, instead of bringing back and just cancelling out that momentum, you can go with the momentum and spin around, which is kind of what Kylo does here. See, he goes in with a thrust and he just moves with the momentum because he's got the sword in his offhand, and if he just, just extended that sword arm right there into a strike. He might have hit his opponent, but his opponent is in a good position to block any incoming strike. But Kylo then decides to, instead of strike, he waits for his opponent to hit him, and he comes up with a block. Now, what, what, do you see anything significant here, everyone? Like, like, look at Kylo's position, look at his opponent's position, and look at what Kylo's holding with his other hand, okay? Kylo has warded off his opponent's weapon. They are in the bind with his lightsaber, which means his opponent is completely open to the polearm staff thing that Kylo's holding with his other hand. So Kylo, take advantage of the opening. Just, 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 just strike him. Instead of striking at the blatant opening his opponent has, he decides to hit his opponent's weapon. <laughs> what is he aiming for? He's actually hitting up to his opponent's weapon with the pole arm he's holding in his other hand. So he hit his opponent's weapon where, and the opponent was completely open. He could have just hit him right in the torso, killed him, but he hits the opponent's weapon to knock him off his feet. And now someone else is coming in. This Imperial Guard, what is his plan here? He's running in both arms up and uh, who is he <laughs> trying? <laughs> like, uh, 
Is he trying to protect someone? No, because the opponent, the other Imperial Guard, is out of reach of Kylo. So Kylo can't hit him from where he's standing. And so the Imperial Guard that ran in with his forearms isn't protecting his other Imperial Guard buddy here because Kylo wouldn't have been able to hit him. And Kylo didn't look to be trying to hit the, the Imperial Guard that just ran in with his forearms, so he could have just stayed back and everything would have been fine. But instead, he decides to run in and... He holds up his forearms to try and block Kylo's lightsaber for no reason at all. And then this, of course, shows the inconsistency with the armor, because suddenly the armor is tough enough to block, like, a lightsaber full-on, you know, touching, putting pressure against those forearms, that armor, and now it's working. And then Kylo has the staff thing in his other hand still, and so Kylo just kills him. Yeah, thanks for committing suicide, because no weapon, no ability to protect himself. He has just run in and commit suicide. Sure, Kylo's thinking, oh, gee, thanks. You know, thanks for that. And now, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Now the armor, is it blocking uh, the strike now? Now he's hitting on the neck. Perhaps there's a weak point on the neck. But the, we've seen the lightsaber penetrate the chest armor completely already. Is it the forearm armor that's better? Oh, now the other guy that was on his feet, he strikes at Kylo, misses completely. Kylo isn't dodging here. He isn't leaning back. And so the strike, and look, granted, sometimes you missed your strike, but if these are well-trained Imperial Guard, you'd think they'd have a better understanding of measure in sword fighting or just combat in general. Step into measure when striking. Don't be out of measure. You know the reach of your weapons. You get a good reflexive understanding of the reach of your weapons and when they get to hit and when they won't. When you'll be out of hit, when you are in measure, when you're not in measure. Coming in for the strike. The strike passes. The strike literally passes the leg already. And then Kylo's going to raise the leg like he actually dodged it and lifted his leg out of the way. Obviously, that's what was meant in the choreography, that the strike was going to come into the leg and Kylo was meant to raise the leg to dodge that attack completely but the timing is off his timing is off and so the stuntman has come in and Kylo hasn't raised his leg so that's why he hasn't extended his arms purposefully misses because now he raises his leg as part of the choreography sorry mate you're a bit late okay you're way off then the over swinging oh he spins around look he did swing so much that maybe a spin was uh, effective or at least acceptable in this specific set of moves right here because he spins around Kylo again he's open and it's telegraphed and he grabs the blade and mate you're not fighting the right way against uh you know an unarmed opponent look i get this is all part of the, of the choreography and i'm not here to try and rag on the stuntman because i actually do believe the stuntman probably know how to fight far more effectively than what is being set up here it actually looks like a lot of the timing is thrown off and if you were to guess who's throwing off the timing generally you probably wouldn't say it was the experienced stuntmen who are out of time in this choreography it's probably the more inexperienced actors if you were to guess anyway kyle is holding the staff and uh their strength against strength okay yeah the 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 Imperial Guard is a decide, all right, you want to you wanna grab onto my staff? I'll throw it. But why? Like, if he had that much leverage to swing around and stuff, you'd think he might have been able to leverage the blade low and then coming up with a, you know, an upward strike from a downwards position. Yeah, interesting position. From where Kylo is holding onto the staff, he actually isn't holding onto it in such a way where he would get a lot of leverage. And so I think the red guy here, Imperial Guard, is he trying to choke him because... This isn't how you choke. You wouldn't be able to choke someone with like this. I mean, all Kylo has to do is turn his head to the side to move his esophagus into a different position so the pressure's on the side of his neck instead of the front. And so, you know, you're not going to choke Kylo here. Yeah, so honestly, it doesn't look like a difficult thing to get out of. So, Imperial Guard. Yep, trying to ineffectively choke Kylo. But instead, he decides to let go of the staff. Look at where Kylo's hand is. Look at what the guy is doing. If he lets go of the staff, even for an instant, and Kylo is trying to pull the staff away, what do you think should happen here? Kylo doesn't pull the staff. I mean... <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So the Imperial Guard has literally let go of one hand on the staff, which means he has no more leverage to hold the staff over Kylo's throat. And uh, <laughs> so Kylo is not pushing against the staff anymore, clearly, because if he was, he would just be able to 
push away the staff from the... And because the guy only has one hand and Kylo has two hands on it, now he has more leverage. Kylo is the one with more leverage on the staff. He'd be able to wrestle it out of the guy's grip, I reckon, just by the right type of angling. But no, Kylo is holding the staff on it and is still looking like he's getting choked. This scene right here, this frame that we're looking at right here, is Kylo choking himself. He is holding the staff onto his neck. It's like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm choking you. I'm, I'm sorry, mate. I've let go of the staff. Oh, 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 you have? Oh, so I don't need to choke myself anymore? Oh, well, not not for long. I mean, I, I, I am going to bring my fist up like that. But, you know, if you're pulling on the staff with any measure of force, that brief moment where I let go, I wouldn't have been able to do this. I wouldn't have been able to wrap my arm around it and you, you would have gotten free. So thanks for letting me do this, Kylo. No problem. This right here is the most infamous exchange of this fight scene. It is just astounding the incompetence of what happens here. So we're going to break it down frame by frame. I've addressed in other videos, but there are certain things I haven't pointed out before that are astoundingly dumb. And so we're going to like break down everything about what happens right here. So from the beginning, Ray, she is... <laughs> It's not even facing her opponent. Her back is literally facing her opponent. Like, just, how are you standing, woman, right? And so the guy, if he just, like, slash forward, he would slash Ray's back. If he, if he d even bothered. But instead, he's just going to stand there and wait for Ray to attack him. Even though Ray is completely open. But no, no, take your time, Ray. Your back is towards me. And so I'm going to swing around, still back towards you. And I'm going to strike. And so, okay, he blocks. Have a look at where his other dagger is. Where is it facing towards? Okay. How close is it towards Ray in this moment? So remember those times where people just forget that they're holding weapons? And in the instances that I pointed out previously, they forget they're holding weapons, but they strike with another body limb. Either they boot or they elbow or something like this. But this is so egregious because of how close that other weapon is, all right? And not only that, he literally does the motion of an attack without touching Ray, okay? He moves the blade from one side of his body to the other, which should slash Ray across the stomach, but instead he doesn't. Ray was so open on the stomach, she should be dead just from that motion right there. But no, he decides to just move the blade out of the way, and after it moves across her stomach, so she should be, should be slashed open at the gut, the blade, as we all know, disappears. Like, holy crap. <laughs> See his other hand? Where, where did the blade go? Where did the dagger go? It's gone. It's not even there. It's disappeared. Like, Ray's force powers can just dematerialize weapons that threaten her, and now it's gone. He has no weapon in that hand at all. I don't... I, I try to give the stuntman some credit where I can, but I don't know what the stuntman was thinking at. At any point, did he say... Guys, I'm still holding a dagger in my off hand, because clearly he still was. He was still holding a dagger in his other hand, and they edited it out, all right? When this was filmed, he was still holding that dagger in his other hand. He didn't throw it away, and so he's holding his le left arm off to the side with a dagger in it while they were filming. Did at any point he, Daisy Ridley, Ryan Johnson, who I was assuming there during the filming of this scene, say, perhaps you should do something with a blade, or you shouldn't be holding it, or maybe we should have had you only fighting with one dagger at the beginning of this exchange, because the whole time they were filming, obviously he was still holding it, and then they edited out in post. So, there are two massive stupid things here, but we're going to go back, because there's a lot of focus on the dagger in that exchange, because the dagger disappears, but we should have been paying attention to how Ray got into this position, and how the guy got in, oh, well, it's a type of grapple, so we're going to go back and see how they got there. So he just blocked Ray's strike, and again, he doesn't hit Ray with this other dagger, which is just sitting so close there. But anyway, we're going to focus on the other dagger, the dagger that's blocked the lightsaber. So they, uh, they're sliding around, lights flashing, and he brought his dagger down under... <laughs> oh, oh, no! The things that you don't pay attention to, because... Do you see where Ray's lightsaber is and how close it is to his head? Originally, right, he was preventing Ray from throwing the lightsaber forward, chopping off his head with his own dagger. But instead of protecting himself and hopefully preventing that, he pulled the dagger down onto the other side of the lightsaber. Now his arm and dagger is behind Ray's lightsaber. Ray's lightsaber is now in between his arm and his head. 
And this is as bad as him not slicing Ray across the gut with it, like, being directly open. The dagger was there, nearly touching her stomach, and he couldn't slice it open. Ray here, her lightsaber is nearly touching the guy's head. There's nothing blocked because he pulled his dagger out of the way, and she could just slice it down on the guy's head and kill him straight away. But that doesn't happen. Like, she's not doing anything. Instead, she lets him move in. No, well... <laughs> She's like, ah, he's doing something. He's actually not grabbing her. He's technically not forcing her to move in any position apart from where she is putting herself in. So she is purposely moving her arm in through his arm. This is obviously choreography, okay? They're doing it on purpose. But in the context of the fight, if it was real, the profound stupidity of this is just astounding because she is now moving her arm in to lock in with his arm when he was... It was, she was almost touching his head with her lightsaber already. And she's letting him herself get grappled, which is not really a grapple. Because this is the other profoundly dumb thing about this sequence of movements. Because guess what happens, okay? So she, she, she is moving herself into that position, not the guy, okay? This is the thing that just, like, <laughs> I'm watching this, okay? And I'm just in awe of the stupid. And again, the dagger has disappeared. And I, at first I was misdirected because of how dumb the dagger was to not realize how stupid what's going on with Ray's arm and lightsaber right now, okay? What is holding her arm in that angle, okay? She's holding it on a 90 degree angle bent around his arm. Is he forcing her forearm into that position? No, there is nothing holding her arm down like this. This is important, pay attention, because she holds her arm in that position for an extended period of time without anyone holding her arm there, okay? She's acting like she's being held at bay and grappled and she can't do anything to the point where she has to drop her lightsaber to try and slash the guy across the chest, which is how she eventually kills him. But no, no one is holding her in this position, her arm in this position, watch. Now let's go frame by frame. Now they stand up, again, nothing. Nothing holding her arm in that position. And now, now she decides to grab the guy's hand that's holding the dagger to prevent him from just spinning the dagger to the side and slashing her in the face. He could have done that before, but now he can't because he's holding her arm and she's wrapping her arm around his arm. Ugh, I can't stand this because you know what you could do in this position right here? She is holding his dagger away with her off hand and her lightsaber hand is wrapping around her arm bent as almost as far as it can go. She could simply just extend her arm, stretch it out, turn the lightsaber about 180 degrees and just slice him in the head. Chop off his head. There's nothing blocked stopping her from doing that. She is so... But no, she's holding her arm bent for whatever reason. It's so dumb and she could just extend it and kill him so easily. So she could have done this at any point up until now, and she doesn't. She's like, oh no, I'm being held at bay. Someone is holding my arm in this position. I'm holding it bent so forward around your arm because of reasons. And uh, the guy, instead of holding it with his fist, before his full forearm was wrapped in front of that pole arm, right? But now it looks to be like it's resting just on the guy's you know, fist right there. And Kylo is actually holding onto this pole arm with two hands. All Kylo needs to do is lift it up a bit, jerk it forward, and he'll be able to pull it free so easily. But no, because he's choking himself, remember? So again, she's holding it in that position. Nothing is preventing her from extending it, but it's just, it's going on. And uh, the stupidity, it's so dumb. And she looks just like, <laughs> then she seems to realize something. Not that she could just extend her arm and just cut his head off because nothing is forcing her hand to be there, she decides to drop it, okay? She drops her lightsaber, like, she drops it, then she lets go of his fist, okay? Presumably, her offhand was holding off that dagger from slicing off her head. If that guy is putting any pressure forward to slice that dagger, it, you know, as soon as the, her offhand moves, that should shoot forward and just slice off her head. But looks well, what happens, she lets go, and the guy, the Imperial Guard, is now just standing there. He is doing nothing. He is letting Ray just move down and grab the lightsaber. He could just slice her head off at any point here, but he's not doing it. He's just standing there. And Ray goes down and grabs it. And he's like, he's just letting her kill her, him. And she just moves forward, slash across the, uh, his knees. And uh, he's just like, all right, yeah, kill me now. Kill me. So bad. Yeah across the neck is dead now so that exchange there was the worst 
exchange I in this whole fight scene. And look, I'm sure there is a worse one in some fight scene anywhere. I can't think of anything. And having said that, I have not looked at many fight scenes as closely, frame by frame, as this one here. But I certainly intend to in the future. So if we ever do come across anything as bad as this, well, we'll know. But I can't think of any exchange as bad as the exchange we just witnessed because the, the level of stupid in every position was astounding so here right i mean this raises an interesting question in lightsaber fighting generally and that's why don't jedis turn off their lightsabers in the middle of fighting if you strike at someone and they go to block and you turn off your lightsaber at the point where it would have connected with your opponent's weapon or lightsaber and then turn it on just after it passes and they did a static block, not a repost where they were trying to attack you, just a static block, you would then kill your opponent. And so turning off your lightsaber would actually be a very viable, useful technique that no one is actually doing. That, or in any of the Star Wars fight scenes in all the movies, we never see. It would be interesting that, you know, there was some limitation, that you couldn't turn lightsabers on and off so quickly in the middle of a fight scene, that, that there's a couple of seconds delay, which means you wouldn't be out of time or so, or something like that. Or, you see, here contradicts that, because Ray, she turns it off, throws the lightsaber all the way to him, grab it, bang, dead. See how quickly he turned the lightsaber on and off? I'm not sure we've ever seen a lightsaber flash on and then flash off that quickly in all of Star Wars. But, so it could have been interesting that there was a limitation that prevented lightsabers just going bang, bang, like that, on, off. But this sets up the, you know, standard that they can be turned on and off so quickly like that, which means why on earth hasn't anyone been using that lightsabers like that in actual fighting? Turn it off and then turn it off really quickly against the opponent and stuff. Uh, aside from that, yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, she throws it, he grabs it, turns it off, and again, the guy's armor doesn't do a thing. Like, it's like, the armor only is effective at certain points and when not. So there we go, guys. That has been the most in-depth and detailed pedantic breakdown of this fight scene that I could possibly do. And it is horrible on nearly every level. This is a terrible, terrible fight scene. Now, when you say, what is terrible, Shad? Because if you're not paying attention and it's just a lot of flashy movement, okay, it does the that. It's a fl like it's flashy movement and, you know, it looks impressive when you're not paying attention. But if you have an understanding of proper combative techniques, okay, actual swordsmanship, and you look at the moves being done in this fight, it's a nonsensical, just stupid mess but there we go and this isn't going to be the only one this is a new series on shadowversity we're going to be doing more and so if you think i'm only doing this because i dislike the last jedi oh no oh no there's going to be more fight scene autopsies and the next one that i'll be looking at anakin versus obi-wan kenobi so do subscribe and you know click the notification bell so you don't miss it because it's not going to be the very next video i space my videos apart in the series and other things like that so there'll be a couple of other videos before i do that but other videos you will enjoy so do subscribe check it out and stay tuned for the next fight scene autopsy i hope to see you there thank you very much for watching in the meantime and until then farewell